Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, human beings of all ages, welcome to Vibrations with Vito. I am your host, Vito. Episode 86. I'm very fond of the number 86. I've always been. I don't know why, but I like it. Uh, I don't have much to say here. Uh, the, the message of the week is don't let sports rule your life and uh i'm a victim of this okay i need to learn that sports is a business some of it is rigged some of it is not but it just consumes me every time every year so don't let it okay just (laughs) try to stay focused um this episode is gonna be a lot of ranting okay and there's no other person i would have loved to have on this program to do that with other than the one and only my brother-in-law Dane DeBacco. Thank you. How you doing? I'm 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 all right. How are you? Good. I mean it's only fitting you bring a Hall of Fame sports athlete on on the show to talk about it. It's official now. (laughs) Last time I was going in I was inducted so it's official now. A Hall of Famer. Yes. Damn it I'm blessed. My brother-in-law is the shit and the toilet paper all right. (laughs) Okay. Uh, Likewise. How's uh, Scene Hall doing real quick? They were down four the last I checked with like uh, less than a couple minutes ago. So I, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just let it. I'm gonna set it, forget it. You All know, right, maybe good. in a couple minutes I'll okay. come back and they'll surprise me with All a victory. Right. Okay, <laughs> they've been doing well anyway. You know, it's 18th ranked team in the nation. I think is Creighton, and they've already won, knocked off a few top 25 teams. So All right. they better make it in the top 25 themselves pretty soon. Fair. Okay. Um, you know, we're gonna let's just get right to it. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna be talking a lot about. The Philadelphia Eagles. Uh, it has been over a week yeah. since the debacle. Ooh, look at that debacle, debacle. You like that? Mm. Um, this was a gift from your brother. Yeah, to my parents. <laughs> uh, a beautiful bottle of wine. Wonderful artwork. You know, the Kelly Green aspect to it. But there's nothing good about this year. So it's like, what are we saving it for? <sighs> <laughs> we uh, might mean, as well drink it. So much hope going into the season. It's going into it, forget it. So much hope 10 weeks through the season. Um, I'd say 11. Yeah. 11 of those I mean, weeks. <laughs> you know, I, I don't want to dive into it. Too, but yeah, I mean, you know, a couple losses. Everyone's going to lose. No one's expecting them to go undefeated. Um, but damn, did it go down fast. Oh, boy. We'll get to it. Let's yeah. get this wine open sure, first. Sure. Shout out to your brother for the gift. Shout out to Gus. Yeah. All right, pull your volume up. All right, it's time for the pour. We're a little upset, but we're gonna we're gonna give you some good content here. <laughs> Cheers. For you, thank you. Have you had this at all? Um, you know, I think I have, but it's been a while. Okay. See, I don't know what kind of wine this is. It just is a Philadelphia Eagles bottle to me. Yeah, um, I know we don't name the brand, right? They don't we pay you. Don't. So we, they could, maybe, after this episode. <laughs> but, I won't, but I won't. Yeah, there is a brand to it, I believe. So. Okay, all right. Well, cheers. Cheers. Thanks for coming. Going to need a lot of this for this one. That's you know? why we got the whole bottle. Thanks for having me. <laughs> oh, we're getting like that. All right, time out. <sighs> wow. I had to do it. Wow. I had to do it. Folks, if you're just listening, he, he finished the first glass. And uh, I've never had somebody outdo me like that. <laughs> What's going on? Do we need to run it back? It goes so, down nice, right? It does. Some might say this is better than water. We did well. <laughs> Damn, that might be the fastest report <laughs> in the history of the show. <laughs> we got, we got, you know, we got to. Make some positive notes on the oh, show for today. Sure. You we're know? gonna add some comedy to this, you know, because we're gonna be. This is gonna be just emotions here. Okay, so yeah, my I first. Got nothing but time too. Good, great. Shout out to the kids. Shout out to my sister, your wife. Shout out to everybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The debacles of the Dukas, you know. <clears throat> Good fit. Shout out to Phyllis and Tom too. Made a quick appearance. <laughs> yes, they did. See you later, alligator. All right. Um. What is it like being a Philadelphia sports fan? That's my question to you first. Um, it's like being in an abusive relationship <laughs> is the best way, okay. you know, you could describe it. Like, I know what's going to happen and I still, and I get beat down and I get built up and I get beat down and I, you know, find some ways to justify it in my head mm. and I come back for more and I come <laughs> back for more and I come back for more. And, you know, this year in particular, 
I think is really testing it. You know, you start with you know, calendar year wise, like year to year, you've got a World Series loss, a Super Bowl loss, another second round <laughs> exit by the Sixers, the Flyers irrelevant, you know, a year right, ago. Yeah, right, right. All right. And then you come, you know, now you come back into the next year, you've got a, a Phillies team that should get back to the World Series. It was a disaster. L- right. Lose a game seven at home, up right. 3 2. They just needed to win one. Right. I was there game six. It was brutal walking out of that state. You just knew it. You just knew going to that game seven, that wasn't going to go well. Um, Another second round exit, <laughs> Sixers, <laughs> and then you've got this Eagles team that gives you all this hope through 10, 11 weeks, right. and um, they crash and burn. Uh, so, uh, Sixers, <laughs> you know, next man up. We'll see what they do. <laughs> At least the Flyers are giving us some hope. You know, second I mean, in the in the division, right? You know, right. which uh, is a um, I want to say this: the whole division, except yeah. for I think the last team. Who I don't know who the last team is in the division, but everyone's having a great year in that division. Everyone is, but I'll tell you, as great this is, this is where the letdown is going to happen for yeah, the Flyers. Yeah. Okay, I don't doubt that they, you know, they're playing hard for Tortorella. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, you know, great kind of coach, good, exactly, great coach. Um, but he already came out and was like, I've been telling Danny and, and Jonesy, don't get, you know, fall in love with anyone. They're going to start trading away like guys that have been, gr- you know, really good for us this year. Grinders, and, right? And that, you know, people have eyes on. They're going to trade these guys away, and you mm-hmm. know, it's going to be a gut punch and. Who knows? They might end up in the basement by the time it's all said and done. I hope not. I want to say this. People think I don't like the Flyers. I do. I respect the Flyers. Okay? I am afraid that they're going to break up this young core to grab uh, an attractive, a quote-unquote attractive star that might just ruin the chemistry and everything. Yeah, I don't know if they'll do it. I think they I under- I think they understand they've got to kind of, you know, build from within a little bit. and Right. And you know they can't. You know that's been that was their mo for years. You know, go get the the big star, mm-hmm. probably like the big star that's past their prime, if right. you will. Forsberg, <laughs> you know Forsberg, <laughs> the first Le one Cavier, was, Oh, you know yeah, we brought yeah. in Vinny. That one was was that a sign? Yeah, you guys signed him. Yeah, right? they you signed so him. You didn't trade anybody, Mm-mm, but you no. traded for Forsberg, I believe. I believe, yeah. After we had drafted him, you know, way back when, yes. right? So you know we yeah, we yeah, yeah. we are good at doing that. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think they're trying to. They're getting away from that that culture. I think um, the trend of Stanley Cup um, winners or contenders is fast gating, and I think the Flyers have a lot of that. I hope so. And when they, Tampa was winning, they had a lot of fast skaters. Vegas won last year; they had a lot of fast skaters. People that just want to work hard. Yeah, I hope so. And look, you know, the bottom line is they got to get their name back on that cup. That layer that had their last cup yeah. on it is oh, it's gone. gone. Oh, it's so that's tough. You know, so we got to get back on that cup. Um, but you know, they'll find a way to let me down. I mean, it's just, it's just been a, it's been inevitable. You I know? saw a tweet that literally encompasses everything we're saying here. Hold on, oh, I took a screenshot. All right, it said, I used the Phillies to get over the Sixers' hurt. I used the Eagles to get over the Phillies' hurt. Now, I'm going to use the Sixers slash Flyers to get over the Eagles' hurt until the cycle repeats. Exactly. That's, that's exactly what I mean. I mean, everyone knows the deal. Post-Super Bowl has been a roller coaster ride for all the teams. Yeah. The Phillies might be the biggest letdown because so much expectations spent the fil- the world series run was like oh you know we're I, happy to be here we might right. we might be able to win this past postseason was like we should have beat the shit out of the diamond i mean after every you know it all lined up we should have had a nice path back into the world series it didn't happen um i'm a little concerned i mean dave dombrowski who's known for like you know always wheeling and dealing making big signs big splash signs mm-hmm I, and I love that he did it. The only thing he's done so far is sign Aaron Nola back, which is great. I, you know, he's back for another five years, which is, you know, good. But, you know, I, he, nothing I, else. And nothing else. And I don't know if he just trusts the bullpen guys that are there, you know. And, you know, obviously uh, Craig is walk, thank God. Good. I mean, solid first half of the season, but he just faltered out. You know, everyone saw it. But Except that's for the it. manager. Well, yeah. I mean, <laughs> you, you, know, you can only go with the guys that you got, you know? Uh, right. But, I mean, when we needed a, uh, an inning shut out, they had other guys. Clearly, he was showing he was, like, rattled. Yeah. They threw him out there. Like, yeah. what, you think he's going to pull it together in the I biggest mean, moment of hope. his career? I mean, you'd hope with uh, whatever, however many, you know, all-stars he's had, but, you know, probably going to end up in the Hall of Fame. Right. Yeah, you would hope that, you know, you use that, you throw that savvy veteran out there that can... They can get the job done for you. So, I guess they're going to go with the guys that they have. Um, who, you know, I saw was it Harder just signed a deal, five year deal with um, 
Was it the Angels? Anyway, he's off the market is my point. So there yeah. goes that last closer <laughs> that, you know, I was holding out hope for. And um, we'll see. So, um, you know. You, you just you bring him back a solid core that doesn't change for sure. Um, Maybe argue with the best bats in the NL, arguably. Yeah, as long as they don't go cold again like they right. did against the Diamondbacks. So we went to game one. <laughs> yeah, we did of that NLCS, and it was electric. Oh, beautiful! And game two was even better. Yeah, I didn't go to that one, but game two was incredible. And then they just forgot how to hit the ball. They forgot how to hit, but I think you know. What it really came down to was they were outsmarted by the Diamondbacks. They Diamondbacks, and you know, credit to their pitching staff and to their coaching, they knew that the Phillies are you know free swingers, and they stopped throwing the ball in the zone, and right. they figured, you know what, Castellanos we'll, will swing at anything. Yeah, ex- right, <laughs> we know that, and, you know, and they figured we'll strike them out before they get a hold of any of one of these you know horrible pitches we're about to throw, and they were right. You know, they just they were swinging at trash, and you know the cycle. You know, just kept continuing batter to batter, and mm-hmm. then baseball's you know could be such a psychological sport. You know, you right. get into a you know better than most, right? On that and one, right? Yeah, Hall I mean, of Famer, I Hall of Famer again, yeah, sure, yeah, little <laughs> little H, little O, little F. Uh, <laughs> so, um, I like how you said that, yeah. So, it's you know, so I, it, you know, it was you know, it was credit to them and the young guys for the Diamondbacks showed up and they did, they weren't afraid of the moment. And when Carroll was struggling all series, came through in the biggest moment, you know, in, in Game Seven. That was know? their center fielder, right? Yeah, uh, yeah, right fielder, right oh. fielder. And he just, you know, found wasn't doing much throughout the series, but Game Seven found a way to get on, found a way to, you know, score. And um, sometimes that's just the name of the game. And I think that's what they do have to prove on, right? They got They got to incorporate a little more. And they were getting better at it. a lot of steals, but small ball. They can't rely on that long ball all the time. Oh, and they were. What sucks about baseball is it's like we have to wait such a long time. To get back to like the postseason, like we're we're gonna be there most likely. Knock on wood. Yeah, I'm knocking on my head. Um, but 162 games, right? Yeah, it's a long stretch. Right. Pitchers so, and catchers report February 14th. There you go. <laughs> I love that Valentine's Day. And then we had the Sixers law uh, collapse up three two against Boston. Up three two again. Right. Again, and that three two, we just can't close it out in the and city. And James Harden shit the bed. Embiid had his usual playoff collapse, which yeah. I expected. Uh, Maxi was a little baby. Now that boy is moving like a grown man. Oh, this is what I want to. Okay, wait, we're going to okay, get to that. Okay, say, cause, all right. <laughs> but I will say real quick on on that note. Sure, obviously. sure. Um, <laughs> you know, Embiid again. He was hurt. Uh, you know, he was. Know. But he's just always. It's I know. Like, it's, it's on a. Schedule. It is. Hopefully that doesn't happen this year. But I yeah, I mean, I would agree with those. Others. I thought Maxi showed up. You know, I think when he they did. needed people, like when Embiid and Harden were nowhere to be found, right. you it was only, him. Yeah, you know, you trying to trying him. to do something. Right. Um, and Boston's just a good team. Yeah. But no excuse to not win at least one of those games. Right. And no excuse just not to show up in yeah. Game Seven. Right. Your stars. I mean, just right. Didn't show up at all. They no, might as well just you know. It was embarrassing. It in. That it was, was embarrassing. Yeah. Um, I want to say so. The Sixers, uh, Maxie had a great game last night, and B had a great game last night. My, uh... <laughs> you can say, go ahead. Yeah. I'll let you get there. My bad, I won't even... My question to you, I actually thought about this before we started recording. Do you think Maxie is exactly what we thought Fultz, or was hoping Fultz was going to be? I th- I think so. I, I, I do, I think so. Um, I gotta be honest, I, I mean, I didn't know, I, I didn't watch a lot of, you know... Wa- you know, Pac-12 Washington basketball. Oh, so I, mean, I don't watch college sports at all. <laughs> oh, I watch a ton of it, but I didn't yeah. sit and watch. You know, they start late, everything. But, you know, everything you heard around Fultz was just, you know, how solid and good of a play. I mean, number one overall, right? Right. But, um, <laughs> but I don't know what we were expecting. I don't think we ever could find out what to even have an idea of what to expect. I agree. just couldn't get on the court. Yeah, um, one, he had that triple-double, right? Yeah. Yeah, and that's where I was like, oh, this is it. We unlocked him. You know, and, and, that shoulder. And I will say this about back to being a Philadelphia fan for as sure. much shit as we get as fans. <laughs> yeah. Like, you had it all throughout these moments with these players. You had these great moments from the fans. You had, yeah. I mean, remember all the praise and the love that we gave Markel Fultz? Right. Cheering him on, right? right? At, no, for no reason. Simmons, right? when he made a three, we acted like Simmons. we won the whole championship. How about, how about when Trey Turner was struggling this past year? Turn the whole season around. That's the standing, standing ovation. ovation uh, right? Ben. Ben Moen, fan of the show, uh, former guest of the show, 
swore that that would be the dumbest thing we could possibly do. And after we did that, he really became the all-star shortstop that we signed. I mean, I know we're off the Phillies, but I think it just let him settle in. Like, okay. Yeah, like They like, got me. Yeah, right? Yeah. And just do your thing. I know you signed a big contract, but right. just... Be not the guy fault. that we thought you were going to be. Right? It was not his fault that his agent could get that big of a contract. Know, you know what I mean? Well, a lot of pressure <laughs> comes with that kind of money. Oh, I agree. Especially in this city. Oh, I agree. You know? Because we want rings and championships right. immediately. <laughs> right. I mean. We've been deprived. You know, I know we'll talk about it in a minute, but I mean, look, Jalen Hurts <sighs> signed a huge deal. Right. And look at all the kind of, you know, the shit that's being talked about him now. I mean, right. it's we'll night and it. day. That's the big part of this yeah. uh, mm-hmm. rant. Um, so, so, I'm sorry. You were saying, yeah, Markel Fultz. I mean, I think, yeah, that's. Maxi has exceeded expectations, I think, because of where we drafted him. 21st, I believe, right? I, I was just going to say, and, you know, it's just go figure. You know, we have all these first-round picks, and we, you know, we're going to get all these great players, these pieces, and the guy that we draft late in the first round yeah. becomes the guy. Cool. You know, yeah, he's becoming one of the guy. Right? Yeah. Because mm-hmm. Ben has got back problems, and he's gone. Yep. Fultz. I it's want him to guy. succeed. I do like Fultz. He's, I really do. I hope is he even he didn't play last night. I think he did. Oh, okay. I think Maxie shot a three right in his face. Good, great. Yeah, Love but it. he's just become a jag, you know? Yeah. Just a guy. <sighs> just a guy. Ooh, yeah. I like that little yeah. uh acronym. Yeah. I mean that's just what a guy, Jag. You know, Simmons, Jag. I mean, you know, these guys, um <laughs> He's overpaid Jag. Well, He's a he's a 2011 Jag that you get for 70,000. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <laughs> God bless him. You know, he got the money. It is right. what it is. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, yeah. I, I, but I like what what Maxie's become. You know, the whole Sixers team is. A, I want to real quick before we do get into the Eagles because got a lot to say. <laughs> the Sixers team as a whole looks better than the past teams as a whole to me. Like yeah, last year we had Harden, Embiid, Maxie, and Toby. Yeah, sounds great, right? Yeah. But the whole team, from de- depth wise, depth wise, I think we yeah. have a lot of it. And like with Marcus Moore, is it Marcus? We have Marquise. Marcus, I always Marcus. forget. Marcus. Okay, Marcus. Marcus Moore Senior. He's playing. Philadelphia guy. Yeah, guy. I love that. He got what keys he? to the city. Yeah, city my hall. man. He deserves I, got, it. So you got a lot of emotional. We got know? dogs on the team this yeah. year. Pat yeah. Bev, dog. Mm-hmm. Marcus Moore, dog. I love dog. the Pat Bev signing. When oh, they signed. I loved it as soon as we did it. Me and Greg would always say like he should have been a sixer four or five years ago. Yeah, imagine him just playing or just being a like a life sixer. Like he just fits yes, the culture. He in really the city, does. You know? He went to Kensington the other day just to go play mm-hmm. on a public park. Like, bro, go home. Yeah, well, uh, <laughs> she, you know. she could go south there. <laughs> I, I mean, depth wise, yeah. I mean, yeah. you know, we they, look good. They do, and but I think we'd all be. I even think Daryl Morey is surprised about it. I agree. You know, you you got rid of Harden and you pick up expiring contracts with right. Batum mm-hmm. and Covington. First he didn't Morris. want to play. First he was about to right. retire, Batum. And now he's coming he's, in and rebounding and shooting threes. I mean, I think it also is a testament to when you play with a Joel Embiid mm-hmm. and a Maxi, obviously. Right, right, right. The things that open up for you. But it's not, you know, but he just plays with a lot. The team just plays with this high energy with yes. Bev and with Batum. I agree. Kelly and Oubre. Kelly Oubre was a nice signing. Great I like that too. Yeah. I, I just think you got different. It just seems like a different mentality out there. I you know, that you'll you look at the the rankings and stuff. I think they're defensively they're ranked about the same they were last year. Mm. But it's just a different feel. They seem to like they move right. They're not. They don't get caught. I felt like last year they were always caught like standing around or yes. staring up at a rebound. Yes. Laziness. They, right. They weren't rotating quick enough. Mm-hmm. I just don't see that with this team, and I just hope they can you know keep that going. I, uh, back in the day, I would I would really uh, appreciate the def- defensive stats, but I don't think anybody plays defense the way that like in 2007 and 8 they played defense like when the Pistons and Rasheed Wallace Ben Wallace like all like the defense is different now because everyone's scoring at least 120 points a game I also think that's because one through five, everyone can shoot the three. I too. agree. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, no, I agree. But so, like, when they say, like, oh, they're the best defensive team, like, they're really not. It's just, like, who can score more? I, it's all, it's an offensive league now where it used to be who plays the best defense. No, I hear you. But it's, you know, defense is always still going to matter, especially down the stretch, especially when you get in the playoff series and Yo, it's your yeah. best versus their best. Right. Um, seven deep, eight deep. Right. right. And it's, you know, you've seen the same team now, like, Two days in a row, th- you know, six games, you know, four games in a row, five games in a row. I right. mean, defense is going to matter in the end. There, but, I know you uh, want to talk about your boy here because I am, uh, I've been a huge critic, detractor, and I still am. Trade him for a crumble cookie. Yeah, please. <laughs> um, so, uh, Tobias Harris, what do you want to say about him? Because you are very fond of him, and I am not. Are what? you about to read the stats? I'm not about to read oh, the stats. <laughs> okay. I was just doing a the, quick shout. The check. Hall lose. Oh. 
Uh, they're in overtime. They got, they forced overtime. Right. Shout out to Scene Hall. Let's go. Get the dog. Um, so what do I want to say about I just, you know, I, I don't know what, I, there's really not much to say. I just think he's a solid player. I think he's just better than people give him credit for. He, just I, the contract is what people have I to, understand, to say But about the, again, him. we were just talking, but that's not his fault. That's his agent's fault. I mean, <laughs> you know, his, 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 shout out to his dad, right? Is that his agent? Yeah, his dad is. The, I yeah. hate, I, uh, let's, not, has nothing to do with Tobias Harris. Yeah. I hate when players, agents are their family members. I really do. I hate that. Okay, I can't but, stand but it. what I will say about this is Tobias made it very... He's a good enough player that it made it easy for him to get the max. Now, <clears throat> we he, fumbled Jimmy Butler, well, you and can, that's we, why he got the max. Did we? Yeah. Or are we going to win a chip before Jimmy does? I'm just saying, <laughs> could you imagine? If I'm Tobias, the first thing I'm saying is Jimmy who, or whatever Jimmy said it. Like, yeah. yeah, they signed me instead of you, Jimmy. That yeah, would be I like the first his... thing I would have said, would say if I were Tobias. But he just seems like... I don't know if you'll hear that out of, out no, of him. No, you won't. It's but too calm, I think collecting. I've been saying he, if you give him the chance and he actually takes the chance and, and runs with it, he can be that third guy. I always feel like even the last couple of years defensively, he's locked in in the playoffs. I feel like you, you know you say that I a lot. say it every to every the last two seasons I've said it. Um, I think he can be that guy. I think he is that guy. And now you even hear it in the national media. Well, they've already got that third play. Like they don't Who said that Shaq, right? I've heard Shaq say it. I've heard Stephen A. Smith say it. I've heard. A oh, pe- Stephen A. Smith. That I was. He said uh, they don't need to go trade anybody. That last piece. Brian of the puzzle Windhorst is. I mean, they've all said bias, it. Right. I'm not saying that. No, look, I'm not saying I'm that guy. <laughs> but all I'm saying is, it's you know his talent. You can't deny it. It's there. I just you know sometimes you know there's different personalities, right? He like shies away sometimes. Right. Maybe he just doesn't not that A type person. He's just gonna, you know, he wants to fit the scheme, fit the system, be he's a team be, guy. He's got to be a dog. Well, I think he's been showing that, and we've always seen glimpses of it, like when Embiid's been out or Max has yeah, been out. Right. And he's got to be the guy. He's been the guy. The stat I saw last night because I wasn't really watching too much of the game because we were kind of busy at the pizza shop. Shout out to the Vito's Pizza, by the way. Um, they were they're twenty three and six when Embiid, Maxi, and Tobias all play. That's good. That's a good stat. That's a really good stat. That's a good stat. I don't know. I've just never. I know it can be frustrating, and you're right. I think the contract plays a lot into it. Yeah, and but it, people's opinions of him, I think, is based off of how much he's getting paid. Right, but I, I think in the end, he's a big. You know, what is he? Six, nine, six, six, yeah, six, ten. Eight, six, nine, yeah. He's a big guy. He can defend. He can shoot. He can back you down in the paint. Yeah. I don't. I think he can be that guy. I real. I've. I've been. You, well, you know. I've been saying it for a long time. Yeah. I've, I've been a big fan of Tobias. Yeah, you have. And, I, and now it's. You know, feeling like he's proving me right. So yeah, I hope he continues this. I really do because I want to win a championship. And if if he, I think if we do have a genuine shot, he's going to have to continue this kind of play where Maxi and Embiid are taking the reins and right. they're carrying. But you need to provide and you need to step up. I agree. It's, you know, Score. and I'll say this: if you're not going to be that guy, just do it now so that way we can make the trade. <laughs> you know, like this right. we can do. We got to do. That's what Ben keeps saying. <laughs> ben keeps saying that oh, he needs. To, he's getting his trade value up. But what are we getting in return? He wants Zach Levine. Ben's always saying Zach Levine. But I'm not convinced that Zach Levine's going to take... Because then that's like the same kind of thing with Harden. He plays no defense. And either he's really hot or he's really cold. I, I'm i not sold on that. I'm not either. Um... I, I, I'm gonna stick with toe. I mean, I, I've been saying it. I'm gonna just get. I'm gonna just ride it. At this point, I'm in. Right? I can't right. back oh, out yeah, now. Yeah, I'm yeah, in. Yeah, balls I, deep. I've been saying Toby. <laughs> I'm gonna keep riding to- the Toby train. And I think um, we're better off for it. Save those assets. Save them for next year, right? Or or something else. But you know, I just wouldn't trade just for the sake of bringing in a bigger name, if you right. will. It just doesn't make any and sense. And this is his, his last year in the contract, Tobias. I think so. So but, I imagine we re-sign him. It, well, it depends on how the end. It depends on the. <laughs> now year we ends. know why he's playing so great right now. Uh, uh, his contract. Damn, mm-hmm. I just I didn't even think about that. But I don't know so much <laughs> about any you know any good teams teams that win. Yes, it's talent, but it's also culture, right? And if he's fitting the the culture and the team, you know why would you mess with that? You know you hear that a lot. Like you're gonna mess with the chemistry. Why yeah, mess yeah, with yeah. the chemistry? I think bringing in the Batums, the Pat Bevs. I think that's role helped. players, right? Genuine role players. You know, um, they thought they did that when they brought in, um, oh, God, what's his face? We traded him away. P.J. Tucker. Thank you. Um, but we need a Pat Beth. I love, I, <laughs> we did. 
<laughs> I loved PJ Tucker. The I idea, did too. The idea of PJ. Yes. And then like when he's getting these wide open threes and he's hitting them off the backboard. Right. <laughs> oh my god. At least Pat Bev will give you a night where like the other night he was like three for three at one point shooting right, the three. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. No, I love. I'm a big Pat Bev guy. All yeah. right. That's enough of the Sixers. I, I I'm. Do you have a projection real quick about the the uh, Sixers? What do you think? Do you think we get past the second round? <sighs> That's crazy that that's the question. I'm going to go ahead and say yeah, and I'm going to go ahead and say that they are a good enough team that they can compete with the Milwaukee's and, and the Celtics of the world. Um, I think we're better than Milwaukee. Top and, to bottom. And you're going to hear first, I'm going to go ahead and just say it. Oh, boy. Conference finals. Mm. Damn that. You'll see us in the NBA finals this Ooh. year. I'm not saying we're going to win it. Right, because we know how that'll work. <laughs> But I'm going to say we're going to win it. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> all right. All right. I like it. Hey. All right. I'm going to ride my fandom all the way through. But I do. I know, honestly, I do think they could. I mean, they could get to the finals. I really see them. They have the team that could get there. I genuinely agree. So I think uh, I think conference finals is where we should be, at least. And I think we could be in the finals. I think all these second round exits, like, we got to, you know, they've done that too many years in a row. Now they just got to get to the finals, right? Yeah. I'm not going to be satisfied. Are you really going to be satisfied if they end in the conference finals? They no, should have been no, there no, no. like two years no, ago. No, no, no. I agree. But I think we have to at least get there, the conference finals, this year. But what do you do if they don't? Are we going to get rid of Embiid? And then we're here going to, you know, we're going to talk to talk, trade Embiid talk and all this I remember, other stuff. I remember a lot of crazy talk last year. <laughs> exactly. Between me and my friends. And uh, I was on board for a second. Just a quick second. Maybe we do need to trade Embiid. Because of his health, not because of, clearly what he does on the court. He's one of the best in the past how many years? You know what I mean? He's doing shit that right, but only a few centers have done. Goes back to your question about oh. being a fan here. We've seen it too many times, right? <laughs> we yeah, we're gonna train him because of his health, and then he'll go wherever and win the championship for sure. So it just, happens all the time. Just let him just. Right. Yeah, this guy is too good of a player. Where you know what? You just ride the ups and downs, and wherever the career ends, that's it. But he should be here for the length of his career. One more stat about the Sixers that I loved. Embiid has not played in 11 fourth quarters this year. That's how good he's been in the first three. Right. And, and the how good team how as a whole. Right. right, the team as a whole. Yeah. But I love that. All right, let rest a big fellow. Yeah. Because we need that. Yeah. Um. Okay, it's time for... Finish that glass real quick. Yeah, I was just about to because I, mean, I need it. Yeah, this is... um. <sighs> okay. This is why we're here, folks. The, the the Eagles really, really let us down. Based off of what happened last year, I'm speaking for myself here, what happened last year, how the beginning of this year started, and then just, I think it's, it's obvious to say we were two different teams this year. For the first 11 games, arguably the best NFL team in the league. Yeah. Those last seven, was it? Eight, including the playoffs. I wouldn't even say arguably. We let's just be. We were. Oh, no, we best were. Team. When we beat Buffalo, I was like, I don't think we best can team. lose to anybody. You just you beat Buffalo. You beat Kansas City by that point, right? right? Yeah, and Miami. And Miami. We had the toughest schedule. And Dallas. Yes, that I think the Dallas game we got lucky. I was at your parents' house for that. Yeah. They were marching down the field. I was hurting that day. Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh yeah, you were. Oh boy, you were. You were hungover. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, man. yeah. That was rough. Go birds. Go birds. <laughs> <laughs> but that second half of the season was just unrecognizable. They were just, it didn't look like any, it looked like Kevin Cobb Eagles. <laughs> That's what it looked like to me. Where we're no expectations. Like those last four games, we had the Giants, the Cardinals, and the Giants again. Those are the last three. I didn't expect any dubs because we, didn't have, we had no identity. We weren't running the ball. Our defense looked like me and you were on the field. Every position. Right. Uh, uh, you know what I mean? It, it, it didn't make sense. So from your point of view, what do you think went wrong? And is it uh, like, I don't know where we go from here. There's so many questions. We were holding off this episode because we were like, oh, maybe the coach will get fired and we could, have, we could talk about that. Yeah. But nothing has happened. So <laughs> no, including the fact that, you know, last I heard, uh, you know, Jeffrey couldn't meet with him on Wednesday because he was stuck in St. Martin oh my looking at a at looking at a yacht or some oh something like that. Goodness. But they met yesterday right. and you heard nothing out of the Novacare right. complex. So right. the media could still be going on for all we know. Who knows, right. Right. you know? Um So what do you think went wrong? What do I think went wrong? I think in short and simple the it all can get tracked back to I think just panic is what happened. They had those 
games where the defense, you know, on what, 10 straight possessions gave up touchdowns or points, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which led to them changing defensive coordinators. And I'm sorry, it it sounded like from everything you hear on these, like, you know, these exit interviews and everything that they're basically learning a whole brand new scheme, like stuff that you would probably start, you know, talking about implementing in the preseason in week 13, (laughs) right? Like it wasn't even like Patricia sounded like he came in and was like, look, we're going to use the size defense and we're going to make some tweaks. It was like new terminology. Like, and I get it. They're professional athletes and they should, you know, they're paid to do a job, but that's a lot. That sounds like too much. And it was obvious on the field. People were missing assignments you know, when running into each other, running into each other, running into the corners, when certain defenses are called, the right. assignments were missed. And and, right. and and so I think on the defensive side, that's what happened. It right. was just panic. And, and that change really, you know, where, you know, if it would have worked, you know, Sirianni would be a genius, right. but it didn't. And, right. and now it'd it's, be like Matt Patricia deserves a head coach job. Oh, right. Yeah, He'd be right back that. in the, in the right. discussion for that. Right. But I think on the offensive side of the ball, it just, you know, it just was, it, it looks stale, right? It just looked like a stale offense. It looked like an offense that teams had started kind of figuring out, and they didn't know how to adjust themselves. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And uh, you know, you figure there's, you know, okay, now they've got last year plus twelve weeks of film this year, and people started figuring out. You know, Bosa came out with that statement oh. about what to do to Jalen. The Forty Nineers broke <clears throat> us. After they, I, gonna, I will never give them that kind of credit. See, I'm I, sorry. Look, I will they can kiss my ass. They beat our ass so bad. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. think that we just. It, and then when he said that comment, it seemed like everybody else figured it out too. But the Cowboys that, beat the shit out of us. The fucking Cardinals beat us. The Giants raped us. But if you look at it too, like <laughs> each, I feel like you go through each of those games that you're talking about, like the Giants game, or let's start with the Cardinals yeah. game. That was on the defense. Our offense put up 30-some points. We talked about that okay. off camera. 19 minutes, they had 31 points. Right, and I think there was a pick six in there, so okay, so, you know. Okay, all right, fair, so, fair, all right, fair, But still, whatever. the bottom line is the offense didn't let us down. The defense yeah. did. Then there were games Correct. like um, that Dallas game at Dallas. Oh, right. Nobody I mean, showed up. Nobody showed up, but the offense drove the ball and turned the ball over. Right? Multiple they, they times. Were, right, down in, in Dallas territory. So right. there were times where the defense, Seattle, you know, you, you oh. scored enough points oh, with Drew Locke as their quarterback. You should win that game. He marched Brad, down the field. Ba- yeah, on on James Bradbury, who, by the way, <laughs> when <laughs> no, I look, wait, yeah, yeah okay. Ahead. But by the way, anyway, so march down the field, ninety two <laughs> yards on James Bradbury alone. Yeah, okay, and part yeah, yeah. of that is probably the defenses that are being called. You see yeah. your guys getting beat constantly, constantly. Why are you still putting them on man? Anyway, my point is that was on the defense. So I think each side of the ball took their turn. You know, letting us down, but it's a you know it's a it's I don't know you know all this talk about do you keep Sirianni do you not I don't think you could put it on one guy I, I just don't I where I've was landed, he calling plays do you think no apparently he was not so he's just the motivator the let's let's be a collective in the in the locker room he's, he's not mo- calling plays at no, all but you know but he, okay so he's not calling plays on game day but that doesn't mean he's not putting a game plan together or helping put a game plan together for the game day. And right? if he is, he did a terrible job. Well, I think... Because that last stretch of the season, we were totally a different team. Well, we joked about this all the time. I mean, it didn't matter. The, every play was... You had four vertical routes. Yeah, and where a QB was, draw. Right. Where was <laughs> he over the middle side? I mean, you see it even in this game against Tampa. Oh, that was you bad. Know, <laughs> you knew he was going to bring a blitz. Yeah. You knew it was going to happen. Every other play, right. You look at some of these plays from the all-22 view, and there is no... The m- middle of the field is wide open. Two receivers running the same round Run, on the same right. side. Or, but the, and the middle of the field is wide open, and yeah, you've yeah. got nothing for a quick outlet for Jalen just to dump the ball off yeah. to Goddard, who it five, should be a yeah. top three tight end in this league. I that think they he is. Underutilized. For sure. Right? Especially this year. Especially this year. And what? And so they didn't do anything to adjust. And, yeah, that is coaching. And you could say, oh, well, that's on the quarterback. Well, when the if the quarter if that's the quarterback's a, being coached, okay, how we're going to beat the blitz is you're a great scrambler, get out of the pocket and make yeah. it happen. That's not a That's not an answer. No. Is that what they told Brady to do, you think? Never. I mean, not that he could do it, but you think that w- would have been the game plan? No. I mean... Check down. Right. Check, check, right. Okay? Well, the, they joke about Dak Prescott. He's dinking Dak. Well, who cares? But it, no, if those it dinking Daks work. Right. Because, yeah, you're bringing the blitz. Here's a three-yard pass that the guy could make a seven, eight-yard reception. You know what I mean? It's, it's just... It, it was, was a team failure. 
It Exce- was a team failure. Everyone and- except for Jake Elliott. He yeah, was the Jake. most consistent all year. So shout out to Make It Jake. Let's get yeah, a little I, cheers I, to Make It Jake. <laughs> my own. That's a... Yeah, take a second there. It was a hefty sip. Yeah, my God. My God is great yeah. every day. Um, okay, wait. Okay, so here's my question. Because yeah. the media is... the me- Philly media is the worst. Yeah, they put, aggravate me a little they'll bit. They'll put out articles... A day before a big game, that like now could, you, could you be referencing the fact that the the article that came out about uh, how was it Jalen wasn't on board with the, with the offense? offense. Yeah, yeah, the day before could, the Tampa Bay game. Yeah, terrible. Right. So, I will I will say this credit to and I got to give Gus the credit on this because he said this to me. And it's a good point. Which Gus is, has got a good good brain for football. Yeah, Go ahead. He, hey. All Bucks County at one point. <laughs> kid, can play. kid can play. We're, we're, we're athletes in this map. <laughs> anyway, um, the point he made was: Would you have rather it came out earlier in the week for the team while they're preparing to Ooh. be answering questions about it all week long, or would it be better for it to come out when it did when they're already in Tampa and there's no yeah. media? Right. I agree with that point, but why not? Why just? How about you just don't put it out there? Well, they're gonna. T- this is stupid. It's a stupid article. Well, I'll be the reporter, and it's because I got a job to do. Right. And click in. You right. click on the article, it gets me paid. Right. So Fair. I mean, that's what it comes it's down to. It's all about to. money, anyway. But yeah, the media is. It can be atrocious. The fans look. I love being a Philadelphia fan, but sometimes I mean, we we are our worst, own worst enemies. You know, especially those older fans. You Aww. know, not to be ageist or anything, but they just love. I feel like they like. That's and it's probably because it's all they knew for such a long time. Yeah, it's mediocrity just, yeah. or just horribleness. But <laughs> God bless them; they stuck through it. Yeah, and, they but did. you know, in the, the first time, there's a little bit of adversity. Like, ah, they stink. Right, get They're rid a of bunch Jalen. Of bums, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? Okay, wait. So this is no, this is the, I I don't know what to do with the coaches. I think Nick stays. We definitely need new coordinators. Um, the, before we I get to that, actually, yeah. I think what we what went wrong was going away from the side. To Patricia in the middle of the year. Yeah, you can't do it. Because it, it was a lot for the players to adjust to. Um, oh, and I'll let ahead. everybody in on a secret. Okay. Run the fucking football. Oh. Okay. All right, I'm done. I think every Philly fan was screaming that. I mean. We had people at, at the practice facility with signs saying run the ball. DeAndre Swift, when utilized correctly, I don't even think I'm in the, in the minority saying this. I think he's a top five running back. Well, he's, he's so he's strong, he's quick, and he makes people miss. He can catch the ball out of the yeah, backfield, yeah, right? A little I screen mean, pass to Deion, imagine that. But instead, we're running screens with Julio Jones, who's six hundred years old. Respect to a Hall of Fame wide receiver. I don't want to disrespect you, but why are we running screens with Julio Jones? Two things. One, I mean, he was top five in rushing through however many the first like seven weeks and then right? maybe just, number two in rushing I, and then yeah, they just went away from it okay right. completely Which i don't understand whatsoever if you are all about your offensive line and how great they are and you've invested money and time and, mm-hmm. and to make this uh, probably if not the most dominant one of the most dominant offensive lines why are you not running the ball and why should it be a surprise to anybody when they finally do decide, oh, we're going to get away from passing it for the 20th time and finally run a ball here, why they're not getting any push on the line? you got to let those guys get into a rhythm, too, which they never let them do. When they came out ran the ball those first two times in the playoff game, I was everybody. excited. Yeah. I was like, finally, okay. We watched and the first half together. We were out- kind of... We can win this game. Yeah, well, I, I, well, you know what I said I would do if they didn't. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And uh, I didn't... <laughs> I didn't I'm gonna, sh- I'm gonna share. His- I'm gonna share the secret. Yeah, it's right. it was snow on the ground, and he said he was gonna take his gloves off <laughs> and streak. Let's just keep it PG. Yeah. He's gonna streak into the street. No, you know. I tell the people I was gonna use the minkia to, uh, <laughs> to shovel the, the 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 roads. Okay, that's that's what I was about to do. He was. For the record, they lost, and I didn't do it. Yeah. So yeah, I don't know what that good, makes me. Good. I, I, He's know, still I, a, a law-abiding citizen. Yes, all right? exactly. He never think, went to jail. Yeah, exactly. Let's keep the let's keep that record straight too. <laughs> Um, so anyway, they didn't do Frustrating, that, and, to say and the least. they had a great running back in Swift. We'll see if they keep him because now he's a free agent. And but, I'm sure uh, he's going to demand good money because honestly, he deserves it. But we traded for him, so like I feel like when you always when you I think any sports team, any no matter what league they're in, when you trade for someone who's on an expiring contract, shouldn't you probably re-sign them? Or that's the goal. I can't, I mean, or you, it's a that's the idea. We're going to trade for him. He's on one year, and then after that's over, we're going to bring him back. Or 
we'll find the next guy, the next Swift that's out there. Who's right? a, who, who? I don't know, but bring in old Derrick Henry, and we're going to expect him, and then we're not going to run the ball with Derrick hey, Henry. Well, see, that would be the ultimate indictment if they did something like that. I mean, that's all you got to do is just hand the ball off to that guy with this offensive Saquon? line. Saquon? Uh, Saquon's a free agent, yeah. Derrick Henry? I don't know. I, it just, but why would you want to bring in any of those guys for the amount of money they'll, they're going to command when you're not going right, to run the ball? Right. It just I, doesn't make sense. I want Swift back. I do. He's a, I, he's a Philly guy. He showed that when we use him, he's very effective. Yeah. It's just we went away from what was working. When we use him. Right, exactly. I, so, again, I think that's on the coaches. I don't know if that's the coordinator or that's the head coach or I don't know what that I'll was. I'll say this. I think I'm going to – I'm back and forth on what to do with Nick, and I think a lot of it's just emotions right now. Oh, yeah, it's all emotions. That's why, like, we – it was good, the timing on this podcast, because if we did it the day after when we were going to – Yeah, it would have been, you know? been fire everybody, Trey Jalen, yeah. da, 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 da. Um, But, you know, oh, because that, that, that's, uh, that's the question I want to ask you. What sure. do you think with Jalen? Is so, it the knee injury? Was it a lot of it, or – I still think he's coordinator. You know, I, no, I'm going to still put him in top top five, top ten quarterback in the league. You look at his numbers. Top ten for sure. They're comparable still. Even if you look at the end of the year numbers, still comparable to like a Pat Mahomes. And I haven't heard. And granted, they're still in the playoffs, but I haven't heard them. You know, knock Pat Mahomes. Oh, they'll never do it. His dick is so far down everyone's right, throat just, in the media. He'll never do anything wrong. It's always oh, he doesn't have the receivers. Well, he does. Oh, <laughs> uh, fair, but he's still got Travis Kelsey. I know. Tony is a decent receiver. Rasheed Rice or Rasheed? Rasheed. Okay, he's been yeah, pretty great good this year. Good right. rookie, yeah. They have a great running game. Pacheco's great. Yeah, okay, he's all right. I think he I'll runs. never give him a whole lot of credit. He went to Rutgers, so I can't right, really right, dive right, in right. too deep. I like Pacheco. He runs real hard. Speaking of which. Go ahead, I'm listening. Yeah, go ahead. Check that Seton Hall score real quick. Yeah, go ahead, do it. Um, no, I like the. It's just like they'll make an excuse for him. Because they love Mahomes. Did they win? It looks like they're about to go into a third overtime. Oh, my goodness. 83-83 with seven seconds left. Shout out to Seton Hall. That's right. Putting in work. Uh Um, But, no, it's just like they have certain quarterbacks that no matter what they do, they'll never say anything. Like Josh Allen's in that tier. Yeah. Mahomes is in that tier. They'll never say anything bad about the quarterback itself. But Hurts has a few games where we don't win, and it's like – is he the worst quarterback they've uh, I also they think overpaid and blah, blah, blah? Well, it's also the fact that Mahomes has shown he can do it, right? He's won Super Bowls. And yeah, so, yeah, yeah. you know, Jalen, when you think about it, he's had, you know, he had the prove it year last year and he proved it. But the year before that, everyone was like, ah, we don't know yet, right? When they right. lost to Tampa yeah. in 2020 in the yeah, playoffs, yeah. everyone's like, yeah, we'll, Tom. S- right. we'll see what he does. He proved it. This year, it's another kind of down year mm-hmm. for lack of, you know, at least people perceive it to be a down year. I do. So until he gets to that, you know, that space where he's, con- you know, consistently taking over games, winning games, mm-hmm. getting to su- more Super Bowls. That's what you need from your quarterback, though, especially when you pay him top dollar. I hear you. but And, and I get the whole, you know, people will say, if he's that great, why didn't he take, you know, that's what they do. They take over game. What is he taking over? Did you not, excuse me, did oh, you good. not see, where was he, where was he going with the ball? Where was he going with the ball? And any of those, instances, there's no one to check down to. Yeah, no, Everyone's right. going this way. I mean, come But on. And then someone would argue that he, at the end of the day, he's on the field. He can audible. He could say, all right, I need a check. Down here, Goddard. I need you to run across the field. The problem is, you, you go back and even watch some of the some of the this past game, right against Tampa. He he sees the blitzes coming. And first of all, it was tough not to see the blitzes coming. Yeah, there's nine people running at you. <laughs> but it's not like he just would stay w- with whatever play was called. You can clearly see he's checking into a different play. Right. The problem is, if the play design for that second play is still four verticals, what yeah. is he going to do? Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, I mean, maybe that's why that you know you heard uh, AJ Brown that you know when he finally spoke to the media, it was like you know we were making shit up. I guess so. Maybe they're like, listen, Jalen, I know my route is supposed to go down the field, but I'm going to curl in yeah. or slant in, yeah, yeah, yeah. just in case, try I mean, to help you right, out. Right, exactly. Maybe that's why they were making shit up. You know, I don't know. That's a separate question. The media is trying to say that we're going to trade. AJ Brown, do you do you feel that? Well, you saw they like, they signed some who they, you sent From, me the thing, yeah, the, the Cleveland guy. The, the, but I see, that's what I hate about the media. They said preseason star. That's yeah. what they said. Preseason star receiver. How come he didn't play the, the hey, regular Victor season? Cruz was a preseason star. He had a decent career. He did. Okay, you know? all right. Fine. That's about it. That's all I can think of. I can't think of anybody. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, but all right. So we signed yeah. him, and you immediately said. 
by by AJ. Yeah, right. Because it's just what's right. I mean, do I think they should? Absolutely not. No. Do I think they're going to? Absolutely not. I don't think so either. But that's that's why I hate about the social media era. Like 2002, 2003, nobody was writing these articles like, oh, should, uh, should the, you know what I mean? Like, I think any star player, like, think about and yeah, to talk about. now I it's like, it, there, there was odds, trade, uh, uh, betting odds of where A.J. Brown's going to go. The I'm, top of the list was the Texans, plus 700. I, I don't, I mean... Fuck that! Why would, are we? Why are we thinking? Why is that even an article? It shouldn't be, but I would have just put my money on the Eagles. Quite frankly, Can, is that an option for him to just stay put? Oh, I no, it wasn't. Oh, okay. What the maybe the field? No, the field. So the field, the field was a, right. it was a plus a thousand. Well, then that's where that sounds like easy money, right it there. Does. I don't think he's going anywhere. No, I don't either. Devontae Smith though, he dog. showed up. Dog. Heisman Trophy winner. Yeah, he showed up every game. I Alabama. Think that we, yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> um. You wrote some notes, though, for oh. sure. What did you write down? So, Because I know you wrote some notes. Because uh, we had a... I don't remember what episode it was. Maybe 46 or 47? I think it was 49. 49. Yes, yeah, they're along those lines. But so, uh, that was a different kind of episode. We had a lot of fun. That was the first time on the show. This one, we're a lot more passionate. But you wrote some notes down. Anything you want to share from that? Sure, I'll walk through them if you want. Sure, <laughs> go ahead. All right, so let's talk with this. I, what I focused on in my notes, I went back because I did my homework. And my I wanted, to, I wanted to make sure that you know, we're honest journalists with the people, <laughs> mm -hmm. right? And so I always strive to be here. Right, exactly. <laughs> go ahead. And so what I went to go back and look for was, what did we say about what the po the the, uh, the looming um, postseason should look like in terms of offseason, excuse me, should look like? Right? After the Super Bowl loss. Right. So it, right. Was a, it was an up show, but it was a down show. Right. So we, but we talked, we got into it a little bit. So let's, go, let's go get through it a little bit. Um, <laughs> so some of the takes we had was, you went through a whole list of potential free or free agents at the time. I know where you're going. With okay, this. <laughs> um, and I'm just gonna I'm just gonna jump right into the biggest thing I said. Sure. The biggest thing that I said that I think proved to be right, but maybe not. Look again, we're honest journalists here. <laughs> maybe not for the reasons I thought it was going to be right. <laughs> sure, go ahead. Was to not sign James Bradbury. Okay, that was number one. Now I thought it was mainly be if I'm going to be honest, I was like, we're not going to be. We shouldn't pay that kind of money. Right, money. Purposes. And we're right. We shouldn't have paid that kind of money. Right. Okay, because he played like ass. <laughs> this whole, you know, he did this whole season. We all saw it. We all know it. But that was one of the things you asked me, and I said no. We shouldn't. We should let Fletch go. I said yes to keeping BG. Ooh. I did mention letting Barnett go which we did midway through the season who traded. Shout, traded and shout out to him who's tearing it up for the Texans right now going into the, their, their divisional playoff game tonight um, no Sanders you were you wanted to bring Boston Scott back I, I did. did too but I didn't think we were going to be able to afford him we didn't use him at all. We didn't. Except for that fumble against the Giants. But this is why I'll never be a good GM, because clearly I way overvalued him, because I think we signed him for, like, you know, one year and, yeah. you know. 600000 yeah, right, <laughs> But I guess the market wasn't too hot on Boston yeah, Scott, no, you know? Because no, no, no one plays the Giants 16 games a year. Exactly. You know? <laughs> That's what the problem is. I should have thought about that. I didn't. Um, you know, we talked about, you know, you were like, do we keep – Sanders and we both had agreed that based off the way he performed in the Super Bowl, no. But we also said that someone's going to give him his money, which Carolina did, and probably instantly regretting doing that. Hey, I he mentioned lost his starting job. Yes, he did midway through the season, right? Maybe earlier. Yeah, go ahead. I mentioned that we had people we could have gotten the draft, like Jameer Gibbs and Bijan Robinson. Oof. those were names that I mentioned. Well, hold on, I want to I want to push back a little bit. Go ahead. I got an end point on this, but go ahead. Because we because we grabbed Jalen Carter. Instead, right. So, and I, I, we'll get into that in a second okay. because I mentioned how we needed these young guys, like the the Jordan Davises and the Kobe Dean. We were high on them. I, I, yeah, let yeah. us down, <laughs> right? Especially big fat baby. Yeah, uh, I don't Jordan know Davis what's going on with him, which is part of the reason why I said don't bring back Fletcher. I did say we should bring back Hargrave. Now, to your point about that, mm. I what did, did I say about uh, you, you mentioned you you. Uh, I, my whole thing was. <laughs> at the running back position. Go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> I said, you know, no to Sanders. We've talked about Jameer Gibbs and them. I... We. I'm going to throw you we, in there. We. we. Go, go, do it, do it. We thought Trey Sermon was going to be the answer. <sighs> We, I, I mean, there's a, we went. If you go back and listen, we talked about. I talked about Trey Sermon thinking, but we also noticed something, which was there was a reason he wasn't getting on the field. We right. acknowledged que that. Questioned we that. questioned yeah, that. Sure. He left. They and they held on to him for most of the preseason. They, they finally let him go. Mm -hmm. He went to the Colts, 
And, you know, granted, they've got great running backs there. Two in front of them. Exactly. But still can't get on the field. So yeah. I think even when Johnson Taylor went down, he was at, he sniffed uh, one game where he had like a right. decent. But then it was like Johnson Taylor's coming back. So what do we need Trey Sermon for? So I um, I do recall being high on Trey Sermon. <laughs> yeah, because we, yeah. we kept saying we don't know what the coaches see. Like right. not not in terms of like we don't understand it. We were, we're just not like, there. We're not there. Right. We right. right. Now we know. I think it's <laughs> <laughs> okay. Go ahead. Probably great talent, but just can't. Figure it out. Anyway, Maybe know the plays, something like that. Go ahead. But the thing that we, you know, that I mentioned there was the other thing was I emphasized prior. You had to prioritize the offensive line and the defense line. Right. And in terms of the defensive line, you were talking about do we keep CJ GJ? And I was like, well, we don't know how good he really is because we it's all predicated on the lines. Right. Well, didn't we see it this year? <laughs> Our defensive line and how he did make it a point to you know he's drafted Jalen Carter right. Great he drafted draft Ojomo and in, in yeah, the seventh yeah. round. And they've right. had some young guys. But they just did not look like the same defensive line, and boy, mm. did the secondary suffer as a result. And even the linebacking core oh. that we thought worse I think, in the league, right? And I think how we figured, well, we got the defensive line. You know, they, you know, they cut Morrow during the preseason. I think they cut Z- Cunningham during the preseason. Uh, yeah, they had to bring him back because Bradley got injured. <laughs> yeah, Dean got injured. Oh, that T.J. Okay. Edwards uh, not signing must have sucked. Towards did we the, say that about towards that? the end of the pod, you <laughs> bring up the fa- just because we were going through you and. One of us was like, "Oh wait, T.J. Edwards is a yeah. free agent." We're yeah. like, "Yeah, we gotta sign him. Yeah. We gotta sign him." And yeah. apparently, I read something Clay Harbor, old tight end, oh. you know, doing his journalistic duties, yeah. reported <laughs> out that per a source, they didn't even offer T.J. F. Edwards a contract. I did see that? They just let him walk, and Which boy, was that crazy. a mistake. Right? I mean, he had a great year for Chicago. And I'm gonna say I was very naive in thinking that Darius Leonard, aka Shaq Leonard, was gonna help. Um, but he. Oh, and nothing against him. I don't really think he like one man can help the whole core. We were as a as a we were fucked by yeah. him. <laughs> okay. Let's just call it what it is. We were I mean, maybe we had to switch coordinators at this point. Right. So yeah. I mean, in a way, I think we've seen what he had to offer because he was learning the defense the same time everybody else is learning the new I defense. Agree. And it's not yeah. like he stood out on film or anything. No, so missed tackles. Everybody. Okay, hold on. That's uh, a separate question. People always talk about the coordinators, which I'm also talking about the coordinators. But Sorry. did any of them say you're supposed to tackle the guy with the ball? Because we couldn't do that at the end of the season. A lot of business decisions being made. <laughs> a lot of business. And I that's, mean, that's a all, problem. That's all you could really chalk that's that up to. That's a problem. To, you know? Okay, wait. I remember us saying, bring back Slay, right? We well, you, In particular, you were Me. fond of his wife. Oh, she's yeah. gorgeous. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that. Okay, okay. I'll never forget that. She's gorgeous. Yeah, yeah. But... Uh, all right, granted, he had the knee injury. I think you, you, because ultimately, I think I was waffling. You're like, would you bring him back? And I think ultimately, I said yes. Yeah, right. Then you threw out the idea of like, would you trade Bradbury for Jalen Ramsey? And I was mm. like, absolutely, like without hesitation. Right, and, that was never an option, and it never became an option. <laughs> uh, my first priority, though, in all this, sure, tell me, bring back Jason Kelsey. And boy, did that pan out. First team all pro this year. Oh, you said that last, okay, I said that right, last right. year. But I think he's gone. My I, dad asked me last night if I, if I think he comes back. And I said, no. I think that report where he's denying that he told everybody, I think it's true because he's just not ready to tell the media that he's retiring. I think he's at the point. His kids are young. I don't know how young they are. I think he's at that point where he wants to see his kids become, you know, like he wants to raise his kids. That emotion that you saw, and I said, as soon as I saw it, I, yeah. I turned to Angela and I was like, I think he's done. I, I think mean, he is you, too. I mean, it's just like he, he really was soaking in the fact that this right. was probably it for him. Now, I hope not. And you What a way tra- to send him off, you pieces of shit. I know. Come on, right? I want to say that. I know. But Come on. Travis, you know, kind of left the door open. I mean, even his own brother thinks that he's got, and he does. I mean, you don't, I mean, I think he's, he's a got first at least two or three left. He's a, he all pro. First team, not even just all pro, first, first team, team right, all pro. Right. Okay? And so, does he have it? Le- I think even he would admit, yeah, he does. But, you know, it becomes injuries and, and head injuries and, you know, your body. And do you want to keep, you know, you he's know, doing that every he, day? He's on know. the line. He's banging every play. Every play. Against another 350-pound man every who wants to get past him. I yeah, know. like he's just, yeah. Jason Kelsey plays one of the hardest positions in football. I mean, I hope they bring him back. Me too. We need um, it. But, you know. Because I'm not sold on Cam Jurgens being our center because he'd be the center, right? He would. And, you know. I'm not sold on Kelsey him. helped allegedly, you know, handpick him. That He saw a lot of, I guess, himself, a lot of athletics, a little undersized 
a lot of athleticism. He had some pe- some down the you know uh, some penalties in the last game, but yeah, <laughs> I mean it is what it, I mean. I, I I think he could do the job. Is he going to be? J- There's never going to be another no, Jason Kelsey. No. So we all just got to resi- resign ourselves. He's to that one fact. of the best centers in this generation. First ballot Hall of Famer. Yeah, one no doubt. And I'm not just What's saying. What's crazy? That. It was crazy. Is that Travis is also a first ballot Hall of Famer? I know. So two first the, ballot Hall of Famers and they're both brothers. They'll be the first brothers ever. Into the Hall of Fame. Shannon Sharp's brother? Did he ever make it? No. Uh, Shannon? No. I don't believe so. No, no, no. Shannon's brother. What's his name? Sterling? Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Sterling Sharp. Yeah. He never made no. it? No. Oh, no. okay. Great. Good tight end, though. Green yep. Bay. I think Super Bowl winning. Was he a tight end or was he a receiver? I don't remember. He was a tight end. Oh, okay. You, I, I'm going to trust you on that one. Um, I'm but a little older. I'm really <laughs> to that was the first brothers that I could think of. Um, yeah. But no, he's. But they will be the first brothers in the Hall of Fame. Wow. Yeah. Think about that. That's crazy. And they're both first ballot, and they both played in this at the same, in the same era. Yeah. Played against each other in the Super Bowl. I hope they can get. I mean, but here's the thing. I'll just come oh back to Nick and, and everything. You know, the coaching. Yeah, talk question. to me. Talk to me. I think in the end, I'm going to trust with whatever <laughs> Jeffrey Lurie decides to do. Mm. Okay. You here's a guy. Here's your owner. He brought this team out of the basement, right? He he buys this team that just waffled in mediocrity, yeah. in basement dwelling for a long time. Yeah. He had a great run with Andy, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, you know, become one of the... Fuck Chip Kelly. Yeah, right. I mean, look, <laughs> everyone's going to make a mistake. You're not going to hit on 100% of the, of the hires and things that you do. But I think in the end, if I, you know, whatever he decides, I'm good with. I think as far as Nick's concerned, you got to look at this. When he first came, now you could debate on who really hired the coordinators. Like you know, everyone's gonna say we don't really know. But assuming Nick hired his own coordinators originally, mm-hmm. he brought in Gannon. Who look compared to Gannon's defense, we would take that any day of the week. Yeah. As much as excuse me, people complain and bitch that he didn't do this, didn't do that. I think everyone would take Gannon's defense and his staff over what oh. we saw this year. Yeah. And then Shane Steichen goes without saying. You know. Yeah. It's clear that they missed him. So if I'm Nick, oh, I'm. What I'm going to tell Jeff is, look, I went into this offseason. We had a deep Super Bowl run. Coordinators, by the time I could start looking into it, got snatched up. I was left with who I was left with, and right. that's what I did. We didn't have to promote Brian Johnson, though. Yeah, but I got to tell you, everyone can say what they want, but thats I don't care who you are, the media, that's all you heard. And look, it's clear that everyone in the league is high on Brian Johnson. Clearly, he's got, they're he's interviewing got, for head exactly. coach. I asked my dad that. I was like, why? Did, so like, we both shared the opinion that, like, the offense was probably his fault, why it didn't work at the end. Right. But why are they offering him head coach jobs? So, like, what is it? Is it not him? Is it Nick? It Was it strictly the defense? Was it J- Is it Jalen? What is the problem? I, you know, it, they're, 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 I'll tell you this. Talk they're going to have a long off season to figure it out. Oh, my goodness. And I think, um, I still think, you know, look, they're going to come back. They still have the weapons. They still have the pieces. This team shouldn't. Just fall off a cliff, you know. It just shouldn't happen. But we did. <laughs> we did this year. But you know, I think once they got swallowed up in it, like there was just kind of no getting out of the out of the current. You know, they just couldn't find a way. Right. Um, no he- floaties could help. No. And you hear a lot of the guys that are talking to the media afterwards, and you know, a lot of high praise for Nick, and and um, we'll see how far that goes for him when it comes to keeping his job or not. Quick side note. Yeah. The two guys who stood out saying high things about Nick. One could be retiring, and one could be going on to another team. Fletcher Cox and Jason Kelsey. If that came from, in my, my opinion, if that came from Smith or um, uh, Jalen Carter, right? Different. But Fletch could be. I hope he's not. I, I want to bring him back because he played the most snaps at any defensive. Well, tackle. Let's, I was gonna say that was another whole thing. You know, right. you can't let your line. I mean, he was. The line he was tired. He had to be tired, but he oh, played great. Sure, no, I'm, I'm, I, I agree. And part of that is because they didn't get the, clearly their rookies weren't ready. That clearly oh. Davis wasn't ready, and yeah. I don't know whose fault that is. But I hear you, what, Jordan. <laughs> I'm. I, it's no one else but you. You gotta want it. I'm not even. I'm not even trying to be funny yeah, here. But He's this is the same stuff that showed up on tape when he was coming out of Georgia, and people were. A little skeptical, and you know, I know I was like, "Look, that was Georgia." You, you have to get to the NFL. The Jordan Davis jersey. I do have the Jordan you invested. Davis. I do. We don't have to say how many dollars he invested into the jersey. <laughs> but the point is, I think you know. All, but you thinking about this, and I know we're going. Yeah. 
All these Georgia guys need to show up next year. Oh, the Georgia in the first all six games. First six games we were them. like the Philadelphia Dogs. And we we're like all the Georgia guys, they all came into play. Even, they mean business and then they just all disappear. Even Jalen Carter. As, no, know, I, I don't even know how he's in con- discussion for rookie of the year for Me defensive neither. Me neither. He he disappeared. Yeah, he uh yeah, Jordan he Davis Towards disappeared. Nicobe Dean is proving why I guess he slipped. Nolan Smith stinks. R- Nolan Smith <laughs> First round pick, like he was from Georgia, right? He was from Georgia. And yeah, don't yeah. forget, he's still a. Fr- everyone gets enamored with Jalen Carter, but Nolan Smith was a first, first round, round draft. You, I mean, we talked about we this. We were watching it when together. he stuck that foot out to try to trip it. We knew it was over. Like, yeah. what is that? Like, Go to grab him, and and he's got to grab him. But he also needs to learn how to get off blocks and take on blocks. He just didn't. But and look. then and then and then he made that sack. Yeah, force fumble, but he yeah. recovered. I know. But then we, you know, the but the but, and the Kobe Dean <sighs> is really showing. Like, if you remember. He slipped. He slipped to what? The third round or whatever? Because we went Jalen Carter. Um, yeah. Excuse me. We went Jordan Davis, Cam Jurgens, mm. and then N'Kobe Dean. And yeah. everybody was wondering, how the hell did he slip? And we were like, oh, we got a good one. And all the talk was because, you know, injury, is he too small? And, well, he better find a way to prove the doubters wrong because right, they're, so right now he's proving right. him right. So exactly. Far right. But, and the only one, you know, um, Ringo looked. Uh, he looked pretty good. I think so for a rookie year. And um, you're behind. And it's not like he's getting a lot of reps. He's behind no. Bradbury and behind Slay, <laughs> yeah. which won't be for long. But. I remember being super high on Bradbury, thinking like he's the best number two corner. Let me check. The I think that's exactly what I said. I think that's if I remember correctly. I think I said he's the best number two corner in the league. Granted, Slay is there every play, um, but clearly I was. I've never been more wrong. Go ahead, talk to me. <laughs> No, I think we just we. I'm looking at my notes, and these are oh. legitimate notes. They were certified right. from a notary and everything. Right, right. It says Bradbury looked like ass in spite <laughs> of his stats, and we don't want to sign him. That's what it says right here. Is that you said that? No, we both. I think we both agree. You did not get into he's a legit number two. Then maybe that's something I said on off camera. Right, but you didn't say it on camera, and that's all that counts. Okay, okay. <laughs> right. That, everything else is allegation. Oh, I threw a bonus note in here. <laughs> Please by the way, talk here's to me. the bonus note. <laughs> Bonus note: We got onto the Phillies again, and you and we met. We, Castellanos came up, and if you remember last year, he came, or two years ago now, he came off that horrible year. And right. I said, "Well, wait a minute." He's a Ben Simmons. He's house. a better. He's a better <laughs> second year player. I think we're going to have better things from him. And you I will just point that. out, all star year this year. Yeah, and then played he, like shit in the second half of the series matters. against. Right, right, but nonetheless. Um, Okay. And I was also excited about Andrew Painter, who uh, got Tommy John before the season even started. But, yeah. you know, still a top five prospect. He's still under contract. Oh, yeah. So he's coming back. Yeah. he's. St- I wouldn't rush him back. Let's move Alvarado to closer. I think the – well, I think Let's way back to when, the Let's beginning of this discussion, uh, that's why I think you're not seeing Dombrowski. I think he looks at the bullpen and figures Sir Anthony – Okay, hopefully now he's recovered off that injury because he did not look like the same guy. But right. between Sir Anthony Dominguez, uh, Sir Anthony, Dem- Sir Anthony, <laughs> Alvarado, yeah. um, Hoffman, you've got bullpen pieces that you can you I, can use. I do agree. And then you got um, you got uh, what's his face, the other rookie, the guy who or pitched Kirk a no hitter. No, the the young guy. His dad was in the stands for his. Wasn't that no hitter he threw? Or no, he- no, Kirkran. We don't. Oh, Kirk- he's the rookie. You're thinking about. Um, he had the long hair. Yeah, the guy we traded for. What's his name? With the no hitter. He, he, he didn't do anything he did after that. Shit, after yeah. that, <laughs> nothing. That's how much we remember Lorenzen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lorenzen. There you go. There you no, go. I don't think Lorenzen. I think already signed somewhere else. Wow. I do think. Yeah. All right. Um, this is what I want to do real quick. Yeah, go so, ahead. A lot of radio shows they get people that call in. Oh right? boy. We're gonna make one call. Okay. Because I know this gentleman has a lot of things to say here. Seton Hall lost, by the way, by three. Triple over time. Fuck. But it's okay. Yo. Yo. You're live on the Vibrations of Vito podcast. Um, I just have a quick question for you. Are, are you okay? Yeah. Are you ready? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. Let's, you're, let's, you're, let's you're one, do it. Yeah. You're one of the biggest Eagles fans I know. Um, Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> my question to you is what, re- what went wrong and how do we change it? Uh, I think Nick Sirianni is a bozo and doesn't know what he's doing. Uh, so I think that that's pretty much what went, went wrong. Uh, he's a glorified cheerleader. <laughs> it's the only thing he really does on the team. And uh, when shit went wrong, and he had to like you know not cheerlead and be a coach, he knew what to do. Uh, uh, I know. I think a lot of people have uh, blamed Jalen Hurts, and I don't really think uh, 
that's really on him. Mostly because, uh, like, nobody on the team got better from last year to this year. Uh, so that tells me that's just bad coaching. Like, if you can't name one player on the team that got better in a whole fucking year, I mean, that just tells me you have a terrible coach. So uh, I think the best option for the Eagles is, uh, I mean, I'm not. I don't know. They, they probably need to find a new coach, but head coach. Uh, yeah, I would just say head coach because, like, I mean, uh, what are you gonna do? Find a new offensive coordinator every other year because the guy you hired to call plays, like, we found out, like, they hired Sirianni so the the quarterback can have the same play caller all the time, and then seven games into his tenure here, they find out he can't call plays. <laughs> so, like, what's he like? My thing is like, what's his job? Wait, I want to push back for a second. You said no one had a better year than last year. Did nobody? Hold on, true or false? Did uh, Devontae Smith have a better year this year than he did last year? He had a worse year by far. How many games? How many? How many? Uh, Devontae Smith last year never dropped the pass. How many drops did Devontae Smith have this year? Uh, a handful. Uh, yeah. Uh, he yeah. had a bunch of drops. He had a bunch of fumbles. That Cowboys game. The Cowboys game at home. Jalen fumbled. Devontae fumbled. And AJ, AJ Brown, fumbled. yeah, yeah. Everybody fumbled. It's continuous all year. Um, every single time after a game, they they would mess up. They're like, oh yeah, we're not executing. We're not executing. Right. I do 19 games, and it's the same issue over and over and over again. I would argue that Britton Covey got better this year. <laughs> <laughs> Britton, Co- Britton Covey had a, a, a significantly I'll, better year. Should be a Pro Bowler, by the way. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll give you Britton Covey. I guess. Thank so, you. I mean, that's you got AJ Brown. Devontae Smith, Jalen, it's Swift, that offensive line. Yeah, let's the offensive line, everybody got worse. I agree. Except for Kelsey, first team all pro. Nah, dude, Kelsey was Kelsey had a worse year. I don't care if he was first team all pro, he was worse than last year. How many false starts did Kelsey have this year? Or I how don't many know. like just any it was like every single game, as soon as they got to the other team's thirty five, penalty on offensive line. It was a Mulata hold, Landon Dixon hold, Landon Dickerson downfield. Cam mm-hmm. Jurgens downfield. Like, right. It's the same shit every single game. Can't argue like, with that's that. Coaching. Like if it's the same thing every game, that's bad coaching. Like, and it was so frustrating. Every single after every single game, even when they were ten and one, we we're like, all right, they're ten and one. This shit doesn't look right. And then all the players were like, yeah, it doesn't look like we're gonna get a fix. We're gonna get a fix. Right. Nothing got fixed. And everybody's like, oh, like you know, everybody's holding each other accountable. I was like, you. Saying after every game that hey we gotta play better but nothing changes that's not being a cap yeah. that's just saying the shit radio people want to hear right <laughs> like if you're if somebody was being held accountable it wouldn't be the same thing every day you got any pushback no I I mean it, it, they're all va- they are all valid points I I I don't take anything away but at a certain point when do you have to when, when do, and we don't we're not there but isn't it on the players to make the plays I mean. You know, I mean, in some cases, they're in positions like, okay, Devontae's in position. He dropped the ball. That's not on coaching. I mean, come on. I agree. Uh, so, I, I mean, I, I wouldn't put that I on agree. the coaches. I agree. The players have to make a play. But if you go through the whole season and it's still continuous in those moments, and that my thing is, because uh, like Sirianni, right? His big thing was like, we're, we're a detail. We're a detail team, right? That was his big co- uh, calling card last year. We're super efficient on the details. They're... There was no details this year. We were terrible. It's in the constant details. fumbles, constant false starts, execution problems. Mm-hmm. Like players aren't on the same page. How, how are we going through the whole season? I think. Whole pa- don't you think part yeah. isn't part of it though? I mean, historically, like this is just historically speaking, teams coming off a Super Bowl loss have not been great. I mean, when you compare this team to other Super Bowl teams that have lost, they've done really well. Mm-hmm. I mean, they got back to the playoffs. They had a, an eleven win season. They were in position. Yeah, I mean, if it, they I, can it just be that maybe it was just you know they were tired, and I don't know how you coach them out of that. Uh, I would I would take that if when when you watch those games, do they not just look like a team that was continuously just unprepared for everything they're about? To we see? look like shit. Those <laughs> last. <laughs> I'm just saying, I'm just putting out other points. You know, I'm not disagreeing. That's that's fine. Which is like, I mean, I, I, that's a terrible excuse, truthfully. Uh, but if that's the excuse you want to. They looked unprepared in all of those games. <laughs> like they looked like the like I knew the Tampa Bay Bucks were gonna blitz all game. Right. You yeah. knew. Right. The players knew. How did they not know? Yet they're still unprepared for everything. Right. I think one of the biggest indictments on this. I mean, all you gotta do is look, and it can't. I don't know if you saw this, but that stat right where they threw like however many 
screen passes this year, which we all feel probably the same way about the screen. And they all net average negative 26 Six yards. yards. Yep. I mean, that's all you need to know. And the fact that they kept going back to that same well, they weren't making adjustments. They, they, they just weren't. I mean, it was obvious. Right. And that's coaching. That is coaching. Even, like, even you can even tell with the play calling, even as, like, the beginning of the year, right? Like, there was just no rhyme or rhythm to any of the play callings. It was like, mm-hmm. oh, this play worked for big yards last year. We're going to use it again. We're just going to do it. Yeah, doesn't it doesn't matter the situation. It doesn't matter how the game of flow is. We're just going to call this play that worked last year and see if it worked. And then there was, like, and I remember when, like, Jalen Hurd is uh, knee earlier in the year. They just didn't change the offense. Like, he couldn't run with the RPOs, but they kept running RPOs. That just turned into inside zone because the quarterback can't run. That's the biggest. That's their biggest issue. Okay, they, there's there was no creativity. There was in the end there was no adjustments. Now, do I think Nick needs to go? I don't know. I mean, it's a tough thing. For, I mean, how do you also his? Okay, this was a bad stretch, but all the games that he has won so far. I mean, what is that? I guess so that he had no part in that. I mean, do you think he lost the? Do you think he lost the locker room this, at this point? This is what I'll say. I would say is this offense this year looked exactly like how it looked in 2021. Like, looked exactly how it looked the first seven games when Nick Sirianni was calling plays. It's how the offense looked. The only difference I really saw was, like, Jalen actually, this year, actually knows how to throw the football. So it, mm, I agree. it actually helps compared to 2021. But I, I think that's the indictment. Like, when Sirianni is the one that's essentially running the offense, this is what it looks like. Uh I just don't think he's he's the creative mind that they thought they hired. Well, I think the offense under Sykin, Sy- Sy- uh, that, that looks great. I think that's got the best out of Jalen. I'm not sure if Sirian is the guy that's going to – like my whole thing, I know it's like, oh, we don't want to hire Sirianni. It's a bad look, but like I could care less about Nick Sirianni. I could care less about the bad look. Like Jalen Hurst, we paid him $250 million. We got to make sure that he's set up to succeed. Agreed, agreed. I also so, agree. Like, Go ahead, go ahead. Like, we need as many offensive minds in that in that staff as possible. This is my position on it. If <laughs> you if you keep if you keep Sirianni, you keep Ryan Johnson and get some senior offensive minds to help out. Because at this point, like Jalen Hurts is going to be going into year four, year five. Like, he can't have six play callers in four years. That's uh, that's agreed. ridiculous. I agree. That's 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 being a bad that's a bad franchise. Like, if right. you're going to keep Sirianni, like together or you just fire them and just find a play caller that I had a coach that's going to be the play caller but I don't it doesn't make sense to me to keep Sirianni fire Brian Johnson and then get a new offensive coordinator and then if he hits he leaves again we're in the exact same situation (laughs) right right it's all that happens so we're going to bring in a nice offensive mind next year he's going to have a good year and then he'll leave to get a head coach job somewhere else yeah yeah now I would just say just bring in they just need some senior guys just some I don't know. Just find some what's experienced the, offensive coordinators. The dude from the Chiefs. Kafka. What's his name? The offensive coordinator. How do you say his name? Kafka. No, the enemies with the Commanders this year. All right, I, I'm driving. I gotta go. All right, Ben. I later. appreciate your time. God bless. Have a good day. I'll see you later. All right, go Birds. What a guy. Yeah, what a guy. I, mean, I thought he was on the Chiefs. No, Bienemy they let him left. Go? They let, he left. So it's Matt he's, Kafka. He's, right, Kafka, I think, is the offensive coordinator Fuck, there. Man. And now Bienemy's over with the Chiefs. You know, look, in the end, you got to just – this. in the end, I feel like Jeffrey Lurie has had a good feel for when he should stay and when <laughs> he's got to let people go. Should I stay or should I go? Right. <laughs> and, you know, look, I am not going to be a proponent. I'm not going to – you know, we're not going to fire the pies on. Give him another year, Okay. He's he's a he's he's not a good look for the brand. <laughs> well, the, the Italian no. brand. I mean, I just I, I guess I, the fact that I waffle back and forth just tells me. I like that you I, say the the term waffle. Yeah, I've never like, heard that okay. used that way. Yeah, well, I, I mean, like it. I understand. You know, but but, but the, like I don't know. I mean, I, I I don't know. I'm not in that room. I'm not in that building. I don't know what other things, the intangibles that they see. What we they need don't to go see. to WIP. The both of us. And just start you. talking shit. <laughs> so maybe this is our uh, our, <laughs> our audition. Our audition video. To go because I'm ready. Yeah, check the scene hall score real quick. They lost by three. Oh. It's official. Yeah, they lost by three. Good effort. A great I'll tell you, game. Those bookmakers, man, they fucking know. They got you. Line was two and a half. See, they got this. Buy the, go- listen, life lesson. Always buy the hook. Mm. You got it here first. You didn't have to pay anything for it either. <laughs> This goes to the message of the week. Don't let sports rule your life because it, it. I said they may be rigged, they may not. 
It sounds like it was rigged. It was two oh, and a half, gonna, you said? Two and a half? Two and a half. And they finished by three. Yeah, so. I mean, look, I'm always going to let it be cool there. I mean, you're, 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 listen. Talk to me. I don't <laughs> think you're, you're, like, when your sister and I first started dating and everything. What a good was, time. Great time. Always <laughs> the best time. The best time. My man. Um, but, you know, and I knew she was big in the sports. I think she knew I was big in the sports. I don't think she quite realized just how big. Right, your balls I would, deep. I mean, it'll ruin my week. I mean, she like she's at the point now, like where she's like, oh my god, like it's gonna ruin your. You're gonna be like this all week now. Yes, yes, I am. Hold all on. fucking week. I'm gonna Side be, note, be miserable. My mom, if it like a let's uh let's for the for the Eagles example. Sure, sure, sure. My mom will be like, oh, they lost. Dane's gonna be miserable all week. Right, and she knows. Uh, cause that's but just... that's like the same thing. When Inti loses a game, I know they should win, and they lose. It's different. But like, let's say we lose. Hey, uh, by the way, real quick on that, we are on a roll. Go ahead, talk that to you. and have fun on the trip, man. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Um, February twentieth. I'm very excited. Nice. We'll be here um, before you know it. That team that we are playing, they just beat Real Madrid. See. 4-2. See a good one there. It's going to be a super crazy game. Nice. Um, but I am very excited. Uh, it's it's like starting to settle into my dad that we're going. Right. Uh, and that, that makes me feel good. It's, it's, it's like everything else. Like, you know, you don't want to get up and go, oh, we got to go somewhere. somewhere. Right. We got to go to this wedding today. Uh, right, I got to right. go to my own wedding today. Uh, right. Then you get there and you're like, this is a great time. My <laughs> own wedding. Is a, I'll never forget your wedding. Yeah. That they played the Bucks yeah. uh. that day. And Deshaun Jackson. These fucking bucks. They know how to ruin everything <laughs> for me. Do, they do. I swear to God. I remember being in the pew of the church, and I think it was Zach. Yeah. Uh, when you're a groomsman. Yeah. Showing the phone. He's like, the bucks just scored another touchdown. Well, it, was, like, it was great. <laughs> motherfuckers. You, well, you, I don't think you all were there yet. Um, <laughs> Gus Fort Sainte, real quick. Yeah, Fort Sainte. We we, Gus and I were in the back waiting for the, everything to start, and I think if there was like, we were watching the game back there. So... Um, they lost anyway, that game, right? Yeah, Deshaun made it a point us. to kill us. Yeah, yeah. a lot yeah, yeah. of it was like an eighty-yard touchdown. I yeah. remember. Yeah, yeah, but you know, I mean, at least I knew early on, like, okay, they're gonna lose this one. So right, let me focus on my my, exa- my exactly. wife here. <laughs> but back to what you said, it's you know that's how. I mean, isn't that sad? Your poor mom's got to worry about. No, so she like thinks about that. She really when um, like the Eagles or the Phillies are playing, she wants them to win, not just because she knows her husband right. appreciates them. She knows that you care maybe more than anybody else. So right. she's like, oh, my God, I hope these Eagles win so Dane's happy the rest of the week. Because <laughs> she's got to see me for four <laughs> days out of the <laughs> Shout out to my mom. Yeah, quick. shout out. Oh, but no, for real. So I appreciate Ben's call. He's got some on Twitter. If you don't follow him, I think it's B Shmoney, B underscore Shmoney. Uh, he's got some hot takes about everybody, the, the Phillies, the Sixers, the Eagles. Um, but most of the time, I'll say I agree with a lot of things he's saying. Sometimes he just says stuff, and I may not agree. But uh, a very insightful mind. That's all. What's his thoughts on Ben uh, on um, on Toby? Is he a fan? Uh, no, I, I think I I don't. I'm I think really I said the that o- in I'm really the, the only person that likes Tobias. Yes. I had Pat McCarthy on here, and he was talking about how Toby needs to go. Ben, every other tweet. Is about Toby going. He wants. I said. I think I said that he wants Levine to come in. Right, he, you did. Yeah, and I think he's open. That's the problem with him is he's open to anybody coming in for Toby, which that, listen, I don't know if that's the answer. You know, listen. That's all. That's. I mean, I don't know. I feel like Toby's the easy guy to attack. You know. Well, I mean, it's obvious. <laughs> I mean, I, I mean, I don't think it is. Yeah. I, I think he's. I, it's obvious. You're not trying. Maxi or MB? No, but I mean, he, he's right. So if you are trading someone to quote unquote get better, oh, it would be Toby, or or just all the capital that you have at this point. Yeah, that too. You know, they got a they they picked up a bunch of stuff. What a great trade when they got rid of Harden. Who would have thought it? You know, right? I said that, I don't remember who I said that to, but I was like, in hindsight, what we got in return, it's working out. The and Clippers working, look good too. I was just gonna say it's working out well for them. Clippers uh, what, look good too. Could you imagine a Sixers Clippers final? First play of the game, there should be a flagrant. Someone should just wrap him up and throw yeah, his ass down. Yeah, put Pat Bev in just yeah. for a second. Fuck it. Close line him. Give a nice JBL close line from hell. Right. Bam. Right. Hardens out. Speaking of, <laughs> speaking of close line, the, 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 and I mentioned this before the podcast, so I'm going to say it now, which is the next thing that I'm looking forward to at Lincoln Financial Ooh, Field. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. WrestleMania, WrestleMania baby. I'll when, be there. So when, when is it? Do you know? I believe it's April 6th and 7th. It's Saturday and Sunday. It's a two-night event. 
I will be there for both nights. Wow, God bless. I bought tickets, two tickets for both nights. Um, I'm going to be an old-fashioned mind here. I remember the, the days where WrestleMania was one day. Oh, I remember the And too. it was about two and a half, three hours, and we had some good, you know. But now it's like we got to do a two-day extravaganza. Well, uh, let me tell you. So this will be my third or fourth WrestleMania. Right, and mm-hmm. I've been to. The, I've never been to the two night events. Right. I've been to. Three, so I've been. To, this will be my fourth. I've been to three. They've been to Philly three times. No, I, I've gone to. I've gone to New Orleans twice. God bless and America. We to, and we went to when they were at MetLife. Mm. The issue is though when they were one night events, they are like seven or eight hours long. That's so crazy. So look, and it's just the one time when we were at the Superdome over in Atl- in um, Atlanta in New Orleans, they ran out of beer. Mm. Every stand we would go to to get beer, it was such a long day. You go to one, oh, we're out. You go to the next, oh, we're out. So, I mean, it makes a lot of sense why Off they the do Off the top it. of your head, you yeah. may not know the answer. Okay. Best WrestleMania that you can remember overall from when you were a kid to <sighs> when you were going. Anyone you can remember? Wait, in terms of like best moment or just total card card? Um, Total card let's, card. Let's the total th- card. Yeah, let's do that. Because, I mean, best moment, that could that's uh, up for debate for anybody. That's like a, an opinion. Well, honestly, I probably could go... I'm gonna go with best moment. I don't know why I asked. Talk to me. Talk to now me. that you asked me for the best card, I, you know, I don't know. But the best moment, pro- and I was there for it. Probably is when Daniel Bryan finally wins the title WrestleMania 30. I was there, and I was also there for two kind of iconic moments. If all you right, will. all right. WrestleMania 30, when Daniel Bryan finally wins the title, which you know he had been fighting for for like the whole year. Yeah. I mean, tear jerker. It was great. Okay. And I the like other, when they pull you in like that. Oh, they go I mean ahead, they suck you in. Or okay. Or or and this was another classic moment. Here I mean cr- I've never heard a crowd more silent in my life the night the Undertaker. streak was oh. broken. I was there for that. You Brock, were there? I was there when Brock pinned him. Yep. Which uh, I'm gonna okay. Which might have been the dumbest decision Wrestle- that they've the, ever was done. Was that the same WrestleMania? I know it was new See, it was in know. New Orleans. It the was the dumbest decision they've ever done. That should have been a thing that, that continued to his career. Because then he lost, didn't he lose to Roman, Roman Reigns? Reigns? So, like, two things that should have never happened. Or or you make it happen when he's finally calling it a career. Or, or I'll push back a little bit, or give it to someone that could elevate the career. Brock was already Brock Lesnar. He doesn't need him beating the streak to make him more of a sell. I get that. You give it to somebody maybe younger, or that they could be like, Ten years down the line, remember when I beat the Undertaker right. streak? Brock Lesnar don't give a shit about that. I think the only thing I would say is, come you on, you know this, this, you know, like, <laughs> I'm about to say like I'm in, like I'm in the field, you know, like, you I are know, in the like, field. I, I know the incident. You're right. But there. I feel like a lot of it is like re- you know it's respect driven, and I think Undertaker would not have lo- just would not have agreed to he lose to just on it. He anybody. signed on it, right? And I think for him, he wanted to lose to someone that he respected and everything, and that was Brock Lesnar. So it is. He what should it is. he should have ended his career. Undefeated. I don't care what the number was, but he should have. That was like a. It was a lure. And after, I'll, I'll never forget this. After WrestleMania 10, when he beat Ric Flair, yeah, he put up the 10. Yeah, that's when it became like a. Oh, he's never lost, lost at WrestleMania. Right. They should have kept that forever. I mean, they could have keep. Even if he never really ever came back or came back every so often, like now that you know, there was always that mystique. Is he coming back for WrestleMania? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Coming and then back? he would come back. And now, just for the you job. Just know, and now it doesn't matter if he yeah, comes nobody back. nobody cares now. You know? Right. You know. But. I want to say this. The, the, in my opinion, the best WrestleMania, I think it was 19. WrestleMania 19 is when, not because I'm a huge Stone Cold fan, but when he turned heel uh, against The Rock, that same WrestleMania card is when they it was the TLC between the Hardys, the Dudleys, and Edge and Christian. And no, they did that, that a, huge, the best ladder match of all time. Right. Yeah, I think yeah. the whole card as a whole, that WrestleMania was ginormous. Am I a fan of uh, Stone Cold going heel? No, I never thought that. He was like one of the greatest. Him Tw- and Hulk Hogan tweener. are one of the you greatest know, like, baby faces of okay, all time. You like him, okay. That's what I mean. Stone Cold should never be a heel. He's never a heel. Um. Did we polish that bottle off? By Wait, you? like fucking twenty five. I know we ago. did. That's because when I went to just kill whatever little fucking bit of sit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna finish it real quick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, you gotta just yeah. There we go. More the story. Good luck at WrestleMania. I appreciate it. I read some tweets, something about like Nick Sirianni. Yeah, I think it's the six and seven. Okay. So, uh, the, someone put something out like you know Nick Sirianni's pitch to Jeffrey Lurie <laughs> was like, you know Jason Kelsey coming back and winning the Rumble or something. He might, like that, you know, he might. And His then, fat and ass then might rest, lift somebody and then over. Being at WrestleMania, I don't know. I you know it'll be fun. It would have been 
I had this image in my head that, you know, we'd be at WrestleMania after winning a Super Bowl, which mm. would have been phenomenal. But, you know, as Jalen likes to say, and we didn't even talk about this, and we could be on here for another oh, hour. Th- that's what I hate about podcasts is I always feel like I have to end it at a certain point. I know. Well, I we hear We could you. talk for four hours. You know, we'd be like, Jalen, it just wasn't their turn. Yeah, what these, the these, fu- hold That's on. the one thing. I, hold on. I'm not knocking him on. I, like, you heard me say I think yeah, he's, yeah. I have no problem with He's a franchise quarterback. That is not the mindset, though. That he should be happy. No. I, you think Tom Brady? You think Never. any of these greats thought, oh, I guess it wasn't. No, they made it their thing. It, it was their turn every year. And right. when they didn't win, they were fucking pissed about the it. The deflate gate, they were making it their turn. Or they were making it their turn. Right. I'll take that. Right. I'll cheat. I'll cheat to win. That's how I am. I'll yeah. cheat to win. If we win, we win. You know? Like That's how that. every Juventus fan thinks. They don't give a shit. They won. They don't care how they won. They win. They may pay the refs six hundred thousand you know, dollars each game. They do it. There's a rumor that I'm a closet Juventus fan. That is. Did we ever get to the bottom of that rumor? <sighs> no. Um, That's gonna I, be like I'm gonna leave that out there like it's like it's the WrestleMania street. I'm uh, just gonna let it linger. Okay. Yeah. All right. So we're gonna let it linger. And but in I'm my gonna... deathbed. <laughs> and in my will, you guys will get the real answer if I'm. If I'm, I'm gonna throw a Juventus up. Fan. Hopefully, you go before me. <laughs> but <laughs> I'll put a blue and black blanket over you right before. <laughs> Um, but no, uh, my dad is strict on that. Like he, th- uh, what did he find? What action- someone made some about me about he that? He had the action finger. Uh, no, like I in the th- box. I thought you had a UV. No, that's no? a funny thing. Oh, so he's just talking to my lawn people. Yeah, yeah. Figurines. I gotta. I'll go. I'll show them to you the next. Time. I should have pulled them out when I was up should've, in the attic yeah. instead of the DMX. Oh my goodness! Time out. Time out. <laughs> How I knew my brother-in-law was about that life, and I knew I co I co-signed him immediately. <laughs> but I knew I signed on the contract when he pulls out two. He pulls out flesh of my flesh, blood of my blood album that sold seven hundred fifty thousand first week, by the way. Uh, and then the Rough Riders Volume One compilation album. And I'm sitting. Well, I'm. Uh, we were doing Christmas stuff. Oh, you right? helped me getting Christmas stuff out, out of the, the attic. attic. I had all my CDs up there. He's got a fr- compact what? disc for oh all of you that don't know what they God, are. Dude, you had so many mm-hmm. classic albums up there, CDs, and I'm like, this guy, unbelievable. Um, but back to the Inta thing, our uh, Juve thing. You're not a Juve fan. I know you're a you're an Inta fan now. I or am about, I? Huh? Or am I? Yeah, right. Not. <laughs> I'm not. So there's just put out there. So I'm there, not. So the Supercopa <laughs> is between your two teams, though. Uh, Allegedly, it's uh, Napoli, Napoli, and Inter. Well, you know, I got a soft spot for Napoli just because right, of the part of Italy my family's which from, which I completely understand. But they weren't they weren't Napoli fan. No one followed them, right? You know. So, so now we're here now. So for not Inter. Uh, but no, I like this uh, little like oh you're a Juve fan because it's just funny. But I know you're not. No. Um, no. Moral of the story: They pay for their all their titles and they don't care. They win. If the Patriots the same way, they they might do a little suspicious shit, but they win. The Astros same thing. They might cheat, but they win. At the end of the day, who remembers the winner? Everybody. And let's put it this way: if you're the fan of any of those teams, do you care? No, no. But the arguments are tough. Like I know, like when my cousins are Juve fans, they know. What do they they've know? Done, they've know. They know they've done some sleazy shit, but they don't care about that. They just be like, well, how many school that though have we won? And then they say that over and over and over again. I'm like, well, you guys are just fucking cheaters. That's why. If we cheated the way you cheated, we'd be the same spot. Oh, that, and that's the, you know, go. this really goes full circle about the first question you asked me go about ahead. being a Philadelphia yeah, sports yeah, fan, yeah, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, that's the beauty about sports. It's the beauty about being a fan, right? Like, there is nothing, you know, there is nothing more that you're more passionate about than your fandom. Really, when you think about sure. it. I mean, I love my family to death. Angela says, I said, Angela, I get it. I said, but you tell me there's nothing that I've loved for 30 some odd years more than this team or that right, team. Right, 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 right. I remember I was at. Um, <laughs> Don't at let the, sports rule your life is what I said in the beginning. <laughs> I remember, you know, way back when I was at the Phillies parade in 08 when they won. Okay. And I was with some people and they were creating them, causing a muck. And anyway, long story short of this, I literally turned around. And I told them all, I told them all to shut the f up. Mm-hmm. I said, "This is the best moment of my life. Don't fucking ruin it for me." Right. And that was that. I like how you said, "Shut the f up." And, and then you yeah. said, you motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, mean, I, mean, I could have cut that one short, but you know, like that's just how it is. I mean, right, right, you know, right. I, I I really say this, and I mean it to, to this day. 
the same feeling when my kids were born, <laughs> that euphoria, yeah. is the same feeling I had when the <laughs> Eagles won the Super Bowl, when the Phillies won the World Series. That I, you know, it really is that same you know, feeling. I, yeah, I mean, you I were, can imagine. Like it's just you know. Um, I remember that phone call at four or, or right. some odd in the morning where we were like, "I chose the labor," and we haul. I had a like I got up like it was someone had a million dollar check for me. I was laying in a cot in the bedroom in there, and I was like, "Huh, what's going on?" Oh, well, okay. Let me, let me make some calls. I'll right, be right back. Right, right, yeah. right. And but, that that rush to the to the hospital, like all four of us, it was me, my parents, and Phyllis, and we were nobody was like, oh, this is so early. We're so tired. No, we were all like, it's the adrenaline. This is the best moment of our lives. I mean, that, and that's you know that it's a, it really literally. Yeah. I've had that same euphoric moment, and being a fan, I put that in that same category. You know, um, let's hope sorry. we can end the year positive let's let's hope the sixers can break the streak and we could bring a championship home someone's got to do that oh i forgot to mention in the, the timeline union? yes i knew you were about to say it. losing the freaking uh, mls cup uh, in in the fashion that they lost it into they they were up right they had like two minutes left to go in extra time i think we did we talk about this the last we time? probably did yeah i think so but so just you know but them too you know i they, have a huge uh, a supporter that is a huge union fan shout out to drew Drew, I'm trying to get him on the podcast, but he's a huge Union fan. I don't know what other team if he supports another soccer team, but I know he's big on the Union. And I remember in I think it was in our episode where I said not a lot of people care or nobody cares about the Union. Like Philadelphia media, they he was like, he was so mad at me. Mother, <laughs> he was like, people don't care about the Union. I'm like, majority don't. I mean, they Which sell is, out that stadium every no, every and game, I, and I love that. You know, like the Union fan base is big, right? But I think Philly media, they care about mm. the Eagles, the Phillies, the Sixers, and that. Aspect. Then the Flyers. Then the Flyers. But like, then not maybe a lot of like, like Temple Basketball, <laughs> LaSalle Basketball. Villanova. Oh, yeah, yeah. oh, excuse me. Villanova, Villanova Temple. And yeah, then yeah. MLS. Yeah, right. Because like, just not a lot of people like hockey also. So it's like the fourth. I think hockey is the best sport to watch. Fun fact. <laughs> Yeah, we've had the, we've had this debate too. Like, what's the most fun playoff? Like, playoff X. I think I said you hockey. said playoff hockey. I still think playoff baseball is mm. it for me. It every just, pitch, every matters. pitch, my right, asshole right, right. is like this tight. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I just you know, I'm like, oh, that was a ball. All right, that was a that's a strike. Exactly. Right? Yeah, yeah, I hear so, you. and for nine innings of doing that, it's it's uh, tough. You uh, go through it. Listen, folks, <laughs> we can talk all. Night. I hope this hasn't been too much for you. <laughs> These are too passionate. Very handsome gentleman here. Um, yes. If you're not from Philadelphia, I hope that this episode has got you to feel what it's like to be a Philadelphia sports fan. Um, I want to say thank you for taking the time out of your busy day. Extremely your busy, busy. busy. Right. But you're not, not anything for you, my my brother-in-law. No problem. <laughs> my no man, problem. I appreciate no that. Um, if you're not subscribed, you fucking better do it right now or else. That's me yeah, clicking the link. One click. That's me clicking the button. <laughs> one click. One click. That's all. It's free. Don't worry about it. And on that note, we're going to leave. Shout out to you. Ciao for now.